Howdy, it's Kyle comparing Canada and Australia. These are two very similar countries. Both are former British territories that take up a huge chunk of land on the earth, but they're both largely uninhabited. These are two of the least densely populated countries on the planet. And they're also two of the wealthiest countries on the planet. Very high standards of living and very high rankings on the human rights indices. So in this video, I want to compare these two behemoths to see which one of these countries is better because despite being on opposite ends of the planet, these are two countries that are quite similar. For this comparison, I'm going to be using 25 different categories and assigning a point to each country for each of these categories. And they will range from economic type things to include GDP, taxes, cost of living, poverty rate, and other things like that. I'll also be comparing the largest cities in each country to see which one is better. I'll be talking about physical geography to include the climate, beaches, national parks, natural disasters, and more. So many categories to compare these two countries to see which one is better. So let's get down to it. Canada versus Australia. I'm going to start with a couple of stats that aren't going to affect the score in the video. Canada has a population of about 38.5 million people and Australia about 26.1 million. In terms of area, these are two of the largest countries on the planet. If you include the water with the area, Canada is the second largest country on earth and Australia is the sixth largest. But even if you do not include the water area in Canada, it is still much larger than Australia and it's still the fourth largest nation on earth in terms of land area. All right, let's start off the competition in terms of the categories that count with some of the economic indicators. Canada has a larger GDP than Australia. It ranks 8th in the world in terms of nominal GDP and 15th in purchasing power. And Australia ranks 13th and 18th in those two categories. However, in terms of GDP per capita, Australia is higher in both nominal and purchasing power. And it ranks 15th in those as opposed to 18th for Canada. For overall household income, Australia also ranks a decent amount higher than Canada in this category. For overall housing cost and cost of living, Canada is a little bit lower. These are both very expensive countries in which to live in terms of the global scale, but Canada is a little bit cheaper. In terms of taxes, Canada is very high taxed with much higher income taxes than Australia and a higher VAT or sales tax as well. So Australia gets off to a quick 3-2 to two start after the first few economic categories. Looking at more economic indicators, Canada has a larger number of Fortune Global 500 companies headquartered there. There are 12 located in the country, which ranks at 9th in the world, with only 4 in Australia, which ranks at 16th in the world. In terms of the Forbes 2000, which is a pretty similar type list, a little different methodology, and of course it goes up to 2000, Canada wins in this one as well with 34 companies, the largest being the Royal Bank of Canada, and Australia has 15 with the largest being the BHP Mining Group. So using either one of these metrics, Canada has more than twice as many major companies headquartered there than Australia, even though the population is only one and a half times as much. In terms of agriculture, Canada's sector is a little bit larger than Australia's. The ag industry is valued at about $135 billion Canadian and it ranks 8th in the world in terms of overall agricultural exports. It's a major worldwide producer of oats, rye, cattle, blueberries, maple syrup, lumber, and many other products. Australia has a very large agricultural economy as well. It's not as large as Canada's, but it is a major producer of wheat, sheep, beef, wine, dairy, and almonds. And the final category on this page is the strength of passport. However, for both of these two countries, it's the same. They both have 165 friendly countries, I guess you could say, they can go to and only 33 unfriendly ones. So they tie in this category and neither one gets a point. Next, let's take a look at health and safety indicators. In terms of overall health care, I looked at many different studies and all of them said that Australia's is better than Canada's. Australia ranks very near the top in terms of its overall health care system, and although Canada's is also very good, it's generally considered one of the weaker ones in terms of developed countries. There's notoriously a doctor shortage and long wait for specialized care. In terms of overall individual health, Australia has a slightly higher life expectancy, and both countries have the same obesity rate. 
However, I have to give the nod to Canada in this category because Australia has by far the largest cancer rate in the world. It's Australia and New Zealand at the top and then a huge gap before you get to third. And this is largely due to skin cancer rates. Australia and New Zealand as well are located underneath the thinnest part of the ozone layer and as a result people that live there are more susceptible to UV radiation and melanoma. Although each of these countries has a very healthy population, I'm going to give the nod to Canada because of that very high cancer rate in Australia. For COVID response, I looked at many different indicators, many different studies of people that looked at different countries' response to the pandemic. And every single one of them said that Australia had one of the best responses in the entire world, while Canada's was pretty good, but not the best. I think due to its isolation and being a giant island that is its own country meant that Australia was able to corral it a little more than Canada. But for whatever reason, Australia did a better job with the response and fared a little bit better in terms of the economy as a result of the pandemic than Canada. In terms of overall crime rate, these are two very safe countries, but Canada is a little bit safer. When I compare the cities, I'll be talking about the crime rates of those individual cities, but as an overall country, Canada is a little bit safer. And the last category on this page is poverty rate. Both of these countries fare very well in terms of a low poverty rate, but it is a little bit lower in Canada than Australia. Next, I'll be comparing the five largest cities of each country with largest versus largest all the way down to fifth versus fifth. And that means starting off with Toronto versus Sydney. Within each city matchup, there are nine different categories that I will be using to determine the winner. So whichever city comes out and winning the best of nine of these categories wins that category and their country wins the points for that category. So largest versus largest is Toronto versus Sydney. Toronto has about 6.2 million people in the metro area and Sydney has about 5.4 million. I'll be making comparisons to American cities in this part being that most of the viewers are American. So these two cities are about in the same size range as Atlanta or Philadelphia. One of the categories that I'm going to be using to determine the winner of the cities is the Economist Global Livability Index. There are some flaws with it, which is why I'm only using it for one-ninth of the overall city comparisons. But Toronto does rank higher than Sydney on this. Toronto also has lower rent prices and an overall lower cost of living. Sydney does have a lower crime rate, but Toronto is better for both public transportation as well as walkability and bikeability. You have to give the nod to Sydney in terms of nature, beautiful beaches right there in town, gorgeous national parks not far from the city, and Sydney also gets the very easy win in terms of climate. But when it comes down to business, Toronto has more major companies headquartered there. So of the nine categories comparing these cities, Toronto wins six of the nine, wins this category, Canada gets a point. Two versus two, it's Montreal versus Melbourne. Montreal metro area has about 4.3 million people and the Melbourne area has about 5.1 million. This puts these in the same general size range as Phoenix or the Seattle Tacoma area. Melbourne ranks very high in terms of the Global Livability Index. It's in the top 10 for 2022 and was number 2 in 2019. However, Montreal has lower rent and lower overall cost of living. Montreal is a safer city with lower crime rate. It has better public transportation, is better for walkability and bikeability. It has more major companies headquartered there. It has more beautiful nature just outside of the city. You have the mountains and the gorgeous river valleys right there. And even though Melbourne is very notorious for having very unpredictable weather, the overall climate is better than Montreal's. But when you factor in all of these categories, Montreal wins pretty easily 7-2, to two, another point for Canada. Looking at 3 versus 3, it's Vancouver versus Brisbane. Vancouver Metro has about 2.7 million people and Brisbane has about 2.6 million. These are most comparable in size to Charlotte, Pittsburgh, or St. Louis. Vancouver consistently ranks high in terms of livability indexes. It's been in the top 10 for many years now. But Brisbane fares very well on these rankings as well. It was number 10 in 2021. Vancouver is notoriously very expensive. Brisbane has a much lower rent and lower overall cost of living and also has a lower crime rate. However, Vancouver does have better public transportation, is better for walkability and bikeability, and does have that gorgeous nature just outside of the city. Beautiful mountains. For climate, these two cities have very different ones. 
Vancouver's climate is very similar to Seattle and Brisbane's is very similar to Clearwater, St. Petersburg, Florida. So very different climates here, but I'm going to go with Brisbane on that one. Neither one of these cities has a major Fortune Global 500 company headquarter there, so in terms of the nine comparison categories for cities, there's a 4-4 tie. So for the tiebreaker, I'm going to be very subjective here and go with Brisbane and give the point to Australia. Brisbane's kind of an it and emerging city for Australia. A lot of population growth, a lot of wage growth and job growth. It's still reasonably inexpensive compared to the other major cities in Australia. So I think those types of intangibles is why I would take Brisbane over Vancouver in this particular category. I do love Vancouver, but it has gotten so crazy expensive. So when comparing these two countries, there's going to be a lot of picking of the knit. So I'm going to nitpick here and take Brisbane. Four versus four is Ottawa versus Perth. The Ottawa metro area has about 1.5 million people and the Perth area has about 2.2 million. That puts these cities in the Nashville, Indianapolis, or Kansas City size range. For this comparison, Perth ranks much higher in terms of the Global Livability Index. It also has a lower rent and overall cost of living. However, Ottawa does have a lower crime rate. Perth is better for public transportation, walkability, and bikeability. And if you're familiar with the story of Ottawa's public transportation, it's gotten off to a rough start. There have been delays, construction fiascos, and two derailments in the past year. So almost by default, Perth is going to win the public transport category. But Perth also does win in the category for nature and scenery. You've got some really nice beaches right there and some nice geology in the area. And along with that, you also have a much better climate than Ottawa. There are no major companies headquartered in Ottawa. However, there is one in Perth. So for this city comparison, Perth wins 8-1. to one. Canada's capital goes down in flames. And 5 versus 5, Calgary versus Adelaide. Calgary has a metro area of about 1.5 million people. Adelaide, about 1.4 million. This puts these in the same size range as Memphis or Oklahoma City. Both of these cities have been in the top 10 of the Global Livability Index for most of the past several years. But as of right now, Calgary is higher on the list at number 4 versus number 30. Adelaide is the cheaper city in which to live, has a lower overall cost of living, including lower rent prices, and it also has a lower crime rate than Calgary. But Calgary has a better public transportation system, is better for walking and biking, and with those gorgeous rocky mountains just outside of the city, you have much better nature and scenery there as well. Adelaide does have some beaches there, but it isn't quite the same as those Rockies, but Adelaide does have the much better climate. The climate there is very similar to San Jose, California. But Calgary does have a couple of major companies headquartered there, which gives it a point and gives it the overall win in this comparison, 5-4. to four. After comparing the largest cities, Canada maintains its lead and is now up 11-7 to seven as we go into the physical geography categories. The first one I'll be looking at is the top national park. Now this is subjective as to which one I'm even considering as the top national park, but I'm going with Banff in Canada and the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. And as such, I do have to go with Australia and the Great Barrier Reef here. It's just a hugely important ecosystem. There's nothing else like this on Earth. The Rocky Mountains are beautiful, but it is a large mountain range, and if this one part here was completely destroyed, which would be awful, there would still be other Rocky Mountains in which to enjoy, but there really is only one area that is like the Great Barrier Reef. The next physical geography category is beaches, and although there are some beautiful windswept rocky and cliff shorelines in Canada, you really have to go with Australia here pretty easily when it comes to the beaches. There are some nice rocky and cliff type beaches in different parts of the country. And there are also some really nice sandy beaches in the subtropical areas along the Gold Coast. And in the northernmost parts of the country, you have the tropical areas and the tropical beaches. So easy win for Australia in that category. And next up is climate. Another easy win for Australia. I would take just about anywhere in Australia over just about anywhere in Canada in terms of its climate. I know there are plenty of people that like the cold, but I do think I am in the majority here. Australia has a better climate than Canada. In terms of natural disasters, these two countries fare pretty well. The biggest concern for both are going to be wildfires or bushfires in Australia. These have been getting worse and worse through the years, especially in southwestern Canada and southeastern Australia. 
And yes, there are some parts of Australia so dry, there's really nothing to burn there in the first place, but wildfires and bushfires are a major concern for both. You, of course, are going to have blizzards and major winter storms in Canada, but you also have tropical cyclones, or what we call hurricanes, around the Americas hitting Australia. And cyclones hitting Australia are more common than earthquakes hitting Canada. But in terms of overall natural disasters, I am going to give the point to Canada here because a fairly small part of their population is susceptible to wildfires. A much larger part of the Australian population is near wildfire danger. Next category is natural resources, something else they both do very well in. Australia is by far the number one producer of iron ore, and its overall mining economy is huge. It's also big for gold, lead, copper, lithium, and zinc, and mining is about 7% of the overall Australian GDP. However, there isn't much oil and not a lot of fresh water either. Canada is also very wealthy in terms of its natural resources, in terms of oil, it has a fourth largest known reserves in the world, has a lot of natural gas and a lot of minerals as well, including being the number two producer of uranium on Earth. There's also more fresh water in Canada than anywhere else in the world, and you also have an incredible supply of lumber. So Australia does have a lot of mineral wealth, but Canada also has some mineral wealth, but also huge oil, water, and timber wealth. So in terms of natural resources, I do have to go with Canada in this category. And the last category in terms of the nature and physical geography is the overall fauna. Canada does have some pretty cool animals, polar, grizzly, and black bears, wolverines, cougars, lynx. But when it comes to animals, there really is nowhere else on earth quite like Australia. Being on an island secluded from the rest of the world has led to some very interesting evolution. A lot of marsupials. So many weird animals there, so many that are poisonous and venomous. And as the old saying goes, everything there in Australia is trying to kill you. One of the most deadly animals in the world is a cone snail, and it's called a geographer cone snail. So many cool animals there, a unique ecosystem is the entire island. So I've got to give the point to Australia in the animals category. So that wraps up the 25 categories that I was using to compare these two countries. You add them all up and the winner is Canada. They win 13 of the categories, lose 11 of them, and there was one that was a tie. But as you probably picked up on throughout the video is that both of these countries are amazing places. Comparing Canadian and Australian cities is like comparing the best cities in the world. But that's what happens when you compare two great places. Somebody has to win and somebody has to lose and Australia you were close. But in the end, you lose. So that's my analysis of Canada versus Australia. And despite Canada winning the competition, these are two of the greatest nations on earth. And as an American, these are two of the top countries I would consider moving to if I had to leave the U.S. But if you do visit Australia and maybe the people might be a little bit cold to you, it's not because they're unfriendly. It's because they're on Smoko. So leave them alone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning about stuff like this. I'm a bit of a nerd, so everything comes from a nerdy type perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out. I want to also give a special thanks to my superior patrons, especially BB69 from San Francisco. If you're interested in supporting the channel and purchasing a pin for the viewer pin map, check out my Patreon page, link in the description. And thank you very much for all the support.